Hi everyone, I'm Dan Freed, founder of Biochemistry Literacy for Kids. In this video, we're going to be learning about how to, in Pymol, create a very complicated structure like this. We all know that Pymol can be used to view and render large biomolecules like proteins and DNA, but did you know that you could also build your own molecules inside the viewer? Um, the one molecule that we're going to be building in this lesson is an artificial amino acid. Um, and that I've just kind of created in a kind of random way. This is kind of a ridiculous structure, not really scientifically uh, useful in any way, but it's still a kind of fun, creative activity that kids really enjoy. And it shows you how to use Pymol to create your own structures from scratch. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's start off this artificial amino acid building exercise by creating an amino acid. There's an easy way to do that. Up in the Build menu, we're going to go to Build, residue and we're going to select an alanine. We could do other amino acids but um, for the sake of this exercise let's start from a very simple amino acid. Now what you'll notice here is we have this little selecting sphere. That's going to be really important for creating our own additions to this molecule. The other thing that's going to be really important is being aware of the mouse mode that we're in. So normally when we're using Pymol we're in the viewing mode. That's the mode that we can use to, uh, for example, change the color of things, which I'll do right now. Let's change this to the normal colors. Uh, let's show the sticks. We'll hide the um, lines underneath. And we'll also, we can also show spheres for now. So we'll, we'll reduce the size of those spheres in a second. But that's the viewing mode. What we actually want to do here is the editing mode. Um, so just be very careful of what's going on there. Editing mode is how we actually add atoms onto the molecule and how we do some other things like the sculpting, which is what I'll do at the end here. So anyway, I don't like these very large atoms, so we're going to go up here, and this is in some of the other videos here. We're going to go to the edit all, and we, I want to change the size of those um, atom spheres. So we're going to go down to um, where it says sphere scale. Sphere scale, and right now it's at 1. I like to use something like 0.3 or 0.2. Let's do 0.25 today. That's going to make the spheres uh, quite a bit smaller. And that's kind of reminiscent of our molecular model kits. So that's kind of the way I like to see the spheres and the, the bonds looking. So there's our alanine. The one thing that you'll notice about the alanine is that it's not really correct. The reason it's not correct is we, first of all, we don't see the double bond. So we need to take care of that double bond of the carbonyl. Let's go up to uh, display and then we're going to go to show valences. Now that's going to give us the double bond. So any double bonds that we add will now be seen. Uh, sometimes we don't need to see them, but I like to show them. So what I'm saying is that this amino acid is not quote unquote right. And the reason it's not right is because in Pymol, the amino acids uh, building tool is mainly so that you can build peptides and extend the protein chain. So that's why we are building residues. When you go to build, it says build residue. So it's not really complete. Uh, but since we're only building a single amino acid, we're going to actually have to change this. So what I mean here is that, see how there's nothing kind of sticking off the end of this um, carbonyl where there should be, and this nitrogen is not complete either? That's because we're building a residue, so we don't actually have a complete amino acid. So I would like to fix that, first of all. How do you fix that? Go back to the viewing mode. Make sure you're in the three-button viewing mode. Now when you select things, you don't select the whole molecule. See, before we select, whoops, before we select the, the whole molecule and we can change things, what I want to do now is do the editing mode, and that's going to give us this sphere selector. And when you see that, that means you're going to be building something on or changing something more than just the colors, right? So let's go ahead and do what we need to do um, to the structure to at least make the alanine complete, and then we're going to add on to it later. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix up this nitrogen here. This nitrogen should have two more hydrogens bound to it. You can't have a nitrogen like that. We have to have two more nitrogens bound. You know that nitrogen should have at least three bonds. Um, and if we know about pKa's and we know about the uh, natural charged version of alanine, it should actually have two more hydrogens on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to um, build, and then we're going to click on fill in hydrogens. Now that's what we would do if we wanted to make it the amine form, the NH2 uh, form. But actually what I like to show is the fully protonated form, the acidic form, which is the form that you would see in a cell or at pH 7. Um, so if you know more about pKa's and if you look at the um, amino acid charts that I uh, usually provide in these courses, you need to see three hydrogens here. So what I'm going to do, it's another little trick, we're going to again use our three-button editing mode. 
We're going to go up to Build, and we're going to go into Make PKA Positive. Now, if you don't know about PKAs yet, uh, don't worry about it, but the po this, that's why I'm showing you this video. That's going to actually change this uh, nitrogen to an NH3. We don't see it yet because we have to, again, fill in the hydrogens. So now we see the nitrogen the way that you see it, uh, and you might have been memorizing your amino acids. You see those three nitrogen, uh, hydrogens sticking off, and now that's actually a positively charged form of the molecule. We have to fix up the carbonyl part here too. This is not right. So again, using our little sphere selector, pymol is not made to do this. So this, there may be better ways of doing that that I don't know, but the way that I'm going to fix up this carbonyl is I'm going to again add or fill in the hydrogens. We have now a aldehyde, right? That's not what amino acids have, but I'm going to trick pymol into creating a carboxylic acid or, or something like that. So again, I'm going to select the hydrogen and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to build and I'm going to go to fragment and you have a whole selection of not amino acids, but different other molecules or different atoms you could add on here. So I'm going to have a, an oxygen put on here and now that just changes the molecule into a carboxylic acid. So that's a little trick to give yourself not just a residue where you're missing pieces of the molecule because it's supposed to be added onto. Now we have the full uh, form of the amino acid. This is the acid form, the fully acidic form. I am kind of a stickler for showing these molecules at the correct pKa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the viewing mode and I'm just going to hide, whoops, I'm going to hide that uh, hydrogen by selecting the atom. So I'm just going to select that one atom. Remember, you have to know the selecting state. You don't want to select the whole molecule like I did before. You want to select the atom and just get rid of that proton. Just hide it, hide everything. Now that's the, what I would consider the, the proper uh, way to render alanine in pymol or anywhere else if you're dealing with the uh, pH, uh, neutral, neutral pH. All right, so there's our alanine. We are now ready to do the fun part to create our artificial amino acid. So we can do anything we want with this. By the way, most artificial amino acids in research are based on uh, phenylalanine. So if you want to build something from the literature, you would go up to here in the beginning and you'd build the, uh, you'd find phenylalanine and start with that. But for this exercise, we're keeping it simple and we're starting with an alanine. So this is the creative part. You can do anything you want here, but you're going to be using the editing mode right? Not the viewing mode. We need the editing mode because we're going to be adding things on. So what could you do? Let's first of all make something that we are all familiar with. Let's make a, a valine. Let's start with a valine. So we're going to um, pick one of those hydrogens and we're going to turn that hydrogen into a valine by adding first a carbon. Here's a carbon, which is really a methyl group. And then let's do another carbon build fragment, and then we're going to do another carbon. So you see there's lots of things you could do. You could really do all kinds of fancy things. But now I've made a valine. That's literally a valine right there, right? We could make um, a isoleucine, build, fragment, uh, another carbon. All right, so there's an isoleucine. So we could actually build many of the naturally occurring 20 amino acids in, the, uh, in pymol also. But what I'm interested in is creating some fancy artificial amino acids just for fun. You know, there's no real purpose for doing this. It's just an exercise to show you that you can build things and modify the protonation states in pymol. That's really all this is for. So uh, let's go ahead and put some fancy stuff on. Let's make this isoleucine. Let's change it. Let's build. What can we build here? We can build, um, how about a, let's put on a cyclopentyl. That's fun, right? We have a cyclopentane on there now. <laughs> let's go on to the other side. Let's put some other fun, funny stuff on this other side. We'll change those colors later. Um, let's do a fluorine. Let's fluorinate this part. We'll make this part all fluorinated. All right, we'll put another, uh, let's put an iodine on. Let's put another, let's put another chlorine on. So... There's all kinds of silly things we can do with this. And let's go ahead and change. We're going to go back to the viewing mode. And we want, to, and again, we have to go back to the molecule. I don't like those green carbons, so let's just change that back. We use set five. So there we go. That's better. What else can we do? You want to do something else silly to this? Let's go back to the editing mode. And let's put something over on this carbon. This is going to be pretty hard to make this carbon in real life if you needed to or if you want to build this molecule, let's put this crate, let's put a sulfonyl on. So there's all kinds of silly things you can do, but there's an, there's an artificial amino acid. This molecule probably has absolutely no function to it, but you could 
uh, create molecules that are from the research literature. You could modify them in certain ways. There's all kinds of reasons that you might want to play with this in Pymol and, and kind of create some, some artificial things. But this is just really more for fun, this exercise, and just to kind of highlight the, the viewing versus the editing mode in Pymol. Now there's one final step that I'd like to go over here that is very important to create a correctly rendered structure. So one thing that you might notice is look how close these atoms are to each other. Now this is really not very realistic. Let me just show you this in another way. I'm going to go back to the editing mode and I'm going to go down back to the sphere scale and I'm going to go back to the full size spheres. Now what you're going to notice here is that there's a, way too much overlap of these atoms. The, based on this, this van der Waals surface, um, there's just no way that this would be the correct conformation. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go back to the um, editing mode, change it back because it's just very hard to see. And um, what we're going to do is create a more realistic conformation. So what I'm trying to say is that these atoms are too close. They're bumping into each other. It's just not the correct way. You may actually, depending on what you did, you may have some really bad clashes between the molecules. You may, depending on what you did, you may have things that are really literally overlapping. So we need to do something about that. Pymol has a solution for us. Pymol has this, this function called sculpting. So here's the sculpting right under build we have the sculpting menu. So uh, from what I know, there's two things we have to do to get this done. We have to click on sculpting, and then we have to go again and click on activate. Now what's gonna happen when I click activate is the PyMol program is gonna start to become self-aware of the surface of the molecule, of the spheres and diameters of these atoms, and it's gonna push the things away to make a more realistic conformation. It's gonna kind of create a more realistic conformation. So just keep your eye on it, watch. See that, it just popped it apart and more or less it kind of spread the molecule out. And it's actually actively um, processing right now and we can actually do funny things to it. If you hold down, at least on a Mac, if you hold down on control and then left click and hold, we can actually kind of change the conformations around here to kind of create different arrangements but that are always kind of realistic conformations that don't have some uh, steric clash is what it's called, clash between the, um, the surfaces of these atoms. So whatever this comes up with is more or less a, a correct conformation and you can kind of arrange it the way you like. I like to show the N and C on the, uh, in, in the correct orientation, the N terminus and C terminus. And uh, this is fine. Maybe you want to put this part pointing more up or something, but it doesn't really matter. You'll kind of get the, the sense of how to do it. Again, you have to be on the editing mode and you're using these little, these little balls to kind of help you do things. If you want, you can actually do two even, and then you can kind of isolate part of it. There's all kinds of fun things you can do here. But uh, when you're done with it, you're going to want to go back to sculpting, and you're going to want to click on uh, either click on sculpting again or deactivate, and that turns off the sculpting. The sculpting uses a lot of processor uh, memory, so your computer will start to heat up, and you'll hear your fan going on your laptop. So it's a good idea to turn that off. When you're, when you're done with it. So there's our fancy artificial amino acid. It's got all kinds of ridiculous functional groups on it. Nothing really realistic about this, but it's still fun to do. And uh, you may find the need to change a certain molecule that you've been working with in PyMol or create something else fun. Or if you can't find a structure of some molecule you're learning about, you can create it from scratch in PyMol uh, as long as it's not too complicated. So that's the exercise building your own artificial amino acid.